Hello students, this is Dr. Sayyad Asifullah, working as Associate Professor and Head in the Department of Mathematics in VVAT. Let us discuss integration by partial fractions today. In this class, let us see integration by partial fractions. Recall that a rational function is defined as the ratio of two polynomials, ratio of two polynomials that is p of x divided by q of x where p of x and q of x are polynomials in x and q of x is not equal to 0 and we have two types of uh, rational functions here one is a proper Another one is improper rational function. Let us see what do we mean by proper rational function. If the degree of P of X is less than the degree of Q of X, then such a rational function is called proper rational function. Otherwise, that means uh, if the degree of P of X is greater than or equal to degree of q of x then such a rational function is called improper rational function and one thing we have the improper rational functions can be reduced to the proper rational functions by long division process so we have a division process where we can reduce improper rational function to proper rational function that division process we will see during the problems now let us see few standard forms of rational functions which are proper and their forms of partial fractions <clears throat> first one p of px plus q divided by x minus a into x minus b it is clearly visible that degree of the numerator is 1 and the degree of denominator will be 2 when we multiply that means we will get the term x square whose degree is 2 highest power of x will be 2 when we multiply x minus a and x minus b therefore degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator therefore it is proper now how do we write the partial fraction for this? We have the standard way of writing which we need to see and remember which says for each linear term take one constant and write in the way A is a constant we have taken for the linear term x minus a see for this linear term x minus a we have written like this constant divided by x minus a we have one more linear term we will write one more constant for this but separated by plus plus b divided by x minus b 
this linear term we have taken here. Now let us see the next term, next rational function. Suppose you have px plus q divided by square of the linear term, square of the linear term. And how do we write the rational uh, partial fraction for this? a divided by x minus a for this linear term x minus a one constant. Since we have the power 2, we need to have two constants. So one more constant we will take now and we write in this way b divided by x minus a the whole square whole square will come here the next rational function is this in the numerator we have quadratic form quadratic equation in the denominator we have a product of three linear terms obviously degree of the numerator is 2 and when we multiply these three linear terms the degree will be 3 because the x will be multiplied three times so it is a proper rational function as usual since we have three terms three linear terms in the denominator three constants will come and way of writing is this a divided by x minus a for this and b divided by x minus b for this linear term plus c divided by x minus c for this linear term this is a capital C and this is a small c these two are different <coughs> Now suppose you have uh, x minus a whole square into x minus b in the denominator. Then let us learn how to write the partial fraction. a divided by x minus a. And since we have power 2 here, this way of writing we need to adopt first term like this we have written already now here the second term we write like this then the, for the other linear term we write one more constant c divided by x minus b now suppose you have one linear term and one quadratic term in the denominator where this quadratic term cannot be factorized further that means we are not able to split this as a product of two linear terms then how do we write the partial fraction form for this as usual for this linear term we will take one constant since this is a quadratic equation of degree 2 we need to have two arbitrary constants in the next, next term. Let us see how do we write. It is bx plus c. We write all at once bx plus c divided by the quadratic term. So whenever we have quadratic term in the denominator, we need to write the numerator part as this two constants will be included in that numerator now let us take one example find the integral of dx divided by x plus 1 into x plus 2 so in the numerator we have 1 in the numerator we have 1 
that means the numerator degree is 0 because 1 can be written as x to the power 0 and the denominator degree is 2 therefore it is a proper rational function now we need to write the partial fraction form for this integrand then replace here and integration happens so that is how we integrate with the help of partial fractions the integrand is a proper rational function yes we have taken the integrand outside that is 1 divided by x plus 1 into x plus 2 we have taken out as we already know in the denominator we have two linear terms so two arbitrary constants will come a divided by x plus 1 plus b divided by x plus 2 So the partial fraction form we have written that means we are going to express this of this form which is integrable after finding the values of a and b we can integrate these two separately. That will be the answer for our integral. Now let us find the values of a and b using the process. Now what is the next step to be done? Multiply both sides by this product. That is whatever is there in the denominator in the LHS we multiply both sides by that here and here also we will multiply here as well so both sides we have to multiply by this term let us multiply now yes, we have multiplied in the LHS we have multiplied here as well now we have multiplied here in the LHS this term will get cancelled and in the RHS part x plus 1 gets cancelled with x plus 1 and x plus 2 gets cancelled with x plus 2 what remains in the LHS will be 1 in the RHS A into x plus 2 plus B into x plus 1 now our aim is to find the values of A and B We have two ways to find the values of A and B. The one way is eliminate B by taking x is equal to minus 1 here and here so that minus 1 plus 1 gets cancelled and the term containing B gets eliminated and you will get the value of A. After getting the value of A, take the value of X as minus 2 throughout, minus 2 here and minus 2 here. So that minus 2 and plus 2 gets cancelled and A gets eliminated and you will get the value of B. 
so this is one way the other way is what we are going to see now by comparing the coefficients of x x square and the constants and so on for that let us multiply a inside we get ax plus 2a b also let us multiply inside we get bx plus b combining the like terms let us combine these two and take x outside as a common and we write all constants separately yes we have combined these two and written uh, like this by taking x outside and the constants separated now in the lhs what we have we have one we have one so which can be rewritten as one can be compared because one is a constant one can be compared with 2a plus b and we can write here 0 into x one more term we can write 0 into x is anyhow 0 but we can uh, write just to compare the coefficients of x on both sides so here in the RHS the coefficient of x is a plus b which will be compared by 0 here which is the coefficient of x in the LHS in this way we will get two equations in terms of a and b let us see those two equations now yes we have written now 0x here so that it can be compared with this 0 we say equating the coefficients of x and the constant term we get a plus b is equal to 0 we have written here then 2a plus b will be equal to 1 we have written here so these are the two simultaneous equations in terms of a and b if we simplify these two equations we will get the values of a and b let us simplify equation 1 minus equation 2 gives that means we are subtracting these two equations how we got when we subtract equation 1 minus equation 2 what will happen this becomes minus this becomes minus here then plus b minus b gets cancelled a minus a minus 2a a minus 2a is minus a and 0 here also we will get minus here in the RHS 0 minus 1 0 minus 1 will be minus 1 now on both sides minus gets cancelled a will be equal to 1 now we can substitute the value of a in any of the equation let us substitute in first equation if you take a is equal to 1 here then the value of b will be minus 1 here we have rewritten the first equation b is equal to minus a but what is a a is 1 therefore b is minus 1 we have replaced the value of a as 1 here minus as it is now let us take these values of a and b in that form of partial fraction 
Thus the integrand is given by so here we have written the value of a and the value of b. Now what was our integration integral integration of this with respect to x. So let us apply integration both sides. Here as well we apply integration and here as well we apply the integration and integrate with respect to x. That is what we are going to see in the next step. See we have applied the integration symbol here, here and here. And one more thing this minus will get multiplied with this plus and gets minus here. Now integration of 1 divided by x plus 1 integration of 1 divided by x plus 2 let us write in the next step what is the integration of 1 divided by x plus 1 integration of 1 divided by x e will be log mod x in the same way integration of 1 divided by x plus 1 will be log mod x plus 1 and integration of 1 divided by x plus 2 will be log mod x plus 2 plus integration constant c because our integration is indefinite we need to have integration constant what is the next step it looks like log a minus log b it is log of a by b log of a divided by b so log of x plus 1 divided by x plus 2 plus c so this completes our problem which is the integration of such a algebraic function using partial fraction method.